The views, thoughts, and opinions expressed in this episode are that of the guest and host and do not necessarily reflect the values of sponsors or other associated organizations. Welcome to The Parental Compass by Family Education and Support Services. I am your host, Bobby Williams. A secondary welcome to all of our subscribers. You can subscribe to the show wherever you listen to podcasts, and we'll notify you each week when the episode drops. Good news and bad news. Good news. Cigarette smoking among teenagers is going down. The bad news... Vaping is going way, way up. It can be tough to know how to speak with your children about vaping. There's a lot of misinformation out there. And also, it's a, it's a brand new thing. You and I didn't grow up with vapes being an issue. Well, to help us get to the facts, we are bringing out the heavy hitters. Amy Taylor from The Truth Initiative. You know the Truth Initiative. Since 1998, they have been fighting big tobacco. They have been spreading information through their commercials and other means. And you know the Truth Initiative. Before we get into this, if a young person you know is interested in getting support to quit vaping, text Ditch Vape to 88709. We're going to talk about it more in the interview. Let's go. The argument I would get back is like, well, it's mainly just water or it's a low level of tobacco, sort of like this is the safe alternative. Is it? Well, uh, first of all, uh, we did a study a couple of years ago uh, where we found that nearly two thirds of young people do not know that nicotine is in all vapes, right? And and so, and we know that nicotine is highly addictive, particularly for young people um, with their developing brains. Uh, we don't know what the long-term effects are of vaping yet, right? These products have not been around uh, for very long. And we know that there are, are health uh, outcomes like Evali uh, from inhaling vapor into your lungs. So this idea that uh, it's not as harmful as cigarettes, we, we just don't know the answer to that yet. But what we do know is that it's not good for young people to be inhaling anything into their lungs. Yeah, like lungs are for oxygen. Right, right, exactly. Vapor or whatever. Um, And if if COVID hasn't told us the importance of of what's going into our lungs, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what has. So, yeah, I actively thought about that during COVID of like our lungs are in danger here. That's right. That's right. And, And we found that young people who were vaping were five times more likely to test positive for COVID. Because if you think about it, you're you're giving your vape to, to one of your friends, you're sharing it, you're swapping uh, saliva at that point. And, and so young people who, who do vape are, are more likely to test positive. Yeah, I would hope the days of sh- sharing a vape are over. What's this? Do they really put like metal in it? Or what's that story about you're inhaling metal or? There's so many different products out there that that it's almost impossible to know um, exactly what's in there. But what we do know is that there's nicotine. And what we do know is that the nicotine levels are higher in vapes than they are in traditional combustible cigarettes. So when young people are vaping, they're getting more nicotine than they would if they were smoking and they are more likely to become addicted more quickly. And some people, like you'll just see some people take like huge vape hits, like they exhale and it's like a mass cloud around them you know you just walk by someone and it's like damn and jewel which uh they were the leader of the the pack and vapes for for many years but in one jewel pod it is like smoking a, a pack of cigarettes and you know what's different about vaping than about smoking if you think about it when you smoke a cigarette you take the cigarette out you smoke it 
you're done, you go on your way to do other things. But with, I think you're totally right, Bobby, about the vaping, like young people just keep, they call it hitting it. Uh, they keep hitting it just, just without stopping, right? And we don't know how much nicotine they're taking in, um, in a day. Yeah, you don't need to light it and make an activity out of it. It's just there ready to go. Well, and it's so easy to hide too, right? Because what what we're hearing, and I've got three teenagers uh, right now, um, uh, and what we're hearing in school is that the bathrooms, now that everybody's back, have become the vape lounges again, and that young people are even doing it in their classrooms, right? They're hiding it in their their hoodies, their uh, they look like um, USB ports, or they look like highlighters, or they look like pens, and so they're very easy to hide. So say you do catch your child vaping, how do you even begin a conversation with them about it? Because truth isn't like super finger wavy, but then you don't want to give the impression that you don't care. Right. So what, what is step one of that conversation? Uh, listen, parents are in a very important piece of this puzzle, right? Uh, and it's very important for parents to uh, have an open and honest dialogue with their with their kids, right? Uh, because they are going to be the most influential. And what we recommend to parents is to not be judgmental, right? That that young people, there's so much misinformation about vapes out there, because as you said earlier, many of them think it's just flavored vapor. And what do you mean this, is, this isn't this is a problem? And so the first thing uh, that we recommend is to go in and, and start asking questions and, and not be judgmental. Uh, the second piece is to just share facts and information. The fact that all vapes uh, contain nicotine, I think, is very important, and that that it is, um, and that it is highly uh, addictive. The other piece is um, for for parents is we have a text based quit program called This Is Quitting, and all you have to do is text eight eight seven zero nine to ditch vape, and uh, young people can uh, can get a part of this program. And what we're hearing is that young people are really grateful to be able to be in a cessation program. And we have more than four hundred thousand young people as a part of this program, teenagers and young adults who are looking to quit. With young people, you can show them a picture of someone with lung cancer, but they're very much in the here and now, or you're not really thinking when you're 15 about when you're going to be 55 or 60. And that's mm -hmm. a brain development thing too. Oh, uh, absolutely. And listen, those messages wouldn't have worked with on me when I was a, a teenager either. And so really the messaging that the Truth Campaign um, is using with kids right now is to talk about how vaping, there's a connection between nicotine and young people's mental health. And this is a very important conversation because I don't know about you, but I've got my three teenagers and all we do is talk about depression and anxiety and stress. And what we're hearing from young people is that they are trying vapes because they think it's going to make them feel better, right? The first hit, maybe they do feel better, but in the long term, because as they become addicted to nicotine and they're trying to stop, they, it really heightens their feelings of anxiety and depression. And, and really sharing this information that the very thing they think they're turning to, to help them um, with their anxiety, depression is actually uh, maybe making it worse for them. Yeah, I've heard it described as it's like wearing a tight pair of shoes for the relief of taking them off. But there there is a side to it where vaping can give you a little bit of a head change. Well, there is a reason that that people use nicotine, right? There is a rush the first time you you take it. Uh, and and there is that there, you know, that young people are reporting, hey, it did make me feel better. But right? There's so much more nicotine in these vapes than there are in combustible cigarettes. Young people are getting addicted pretty quickly. And so when they're trying to stop, those withdraw feelings are really what make you feel the, the anxiousness and the stress. And so 
what we're hearing from young people is, is like, I can't put my vape down. I'm spending all this money um, and I'm stressed out because I can't afford anything because all I'm thinking about is how I get my next hit of my vape. And so, uh, yes, there may be a short term feeling of, um, of euphoria from young people, but it's that long term withdrawal that's problematic. I think another challenge with the situation is that it's a social thing like I remember being in college and it's like if you're bored or you want to go connect with people go to the smokers pit and that's where everyone was and you just see someone and chat. And so there's a social element to it too. I was I was that person who would look out at the the smokers lounge in high school and think, oh, I wonder if I want to smoke just so I can like hang out with everybody. And and that hasn't changed that much now now with young people, right? Uh, especially this is such a social activity, right? That That's what we're hearing is that young people are doing it when they're going to parties, right? They're sharing it with their friends. And, uh, and it's hard when there is peer pressure out there to use it. I mean, this generation is really all about, you know, hey, you do you kind of thing. And so what we're trying to encourage young people is to say, hey, you know, it's just not for me, right? How do they easily uh, get out of those situations and not use it? And, and so uh, that's really the, the resources that we're trying to provide young people so that they can make different decisions. I think one thing that's consistent with tobacco use is there's this feeling around it of like, oh, you're a badass. And with this generation, it's sort of this feeling of like, oh, I'm, I'm kind of trying to think how to phrase this, like I'm damaged, or there's still a feeling that it's like, I'm cool. Yeah, I mean, listen, what these kids have gone through, the financial crisis, uh, the pandemic, the um, social justice uh, things that have been been going on, it's really, really stressful. And and there is there is this feeling, uh, at least at the beginning, that the cool kids were doing it. But what we're hearing now, uh, and particularly as we when we launched our It's Messing With Our Heads campaign and how vaping is messing with young people's heads, uh, is that what we're finding is it, it's not even so much that it's cool. It's, it's about, I'm so stressed. I don't know what to do. I'm turning to vapes because I just need something that's making me feel, feel good right now. And so it's been an interesting uh, post pandemic shift that it's not just, it's not just about being cool, although that is there, right. But it's also about, um, reducing feelings of depression and stress. That brings up a good point too, of it is really tough to be a young person right now. Like the world is collectively more stressed than it was five years ago or something. So it makes sense that youth are looking for coping tools and well, and what we try to provide young people is alternatives to that. So we we do things with breath works, right? How do we provide young people tools uh, so that when they are feeling stressed, how they can can take a breath to make them feel better? How can they um, do participate in activities of self care and self love? Right, uh, doing yoga, right, getting some exercise. So, what are other alternatives? what we want to do is give them other alternatives than turning to their vape to make them feel better and and to really encourage young people to share that with each other. I think that's an excellent point. Like we talk about on this show, you can't just be like, don't do this, because then it's like, what am I going to do? Like, instead of don't do this, the, the message could be try doing this and this is a alternative and, and i'm sure there's a lot more success with that approach oh absolutely and and listen we're never going to say don't vape right because it's bad for you that is not a message that's going to resonate for young people but what will is giving them the facts about how much nicotine is in it giving them the facts about how uh it's making them more more stressed uh 
Uh, also giving them the facts that we don't know what the long-term effects of vaping. And so there is this misinformation out there. Well, it's not as bad as traditional cigarettes, but in fact, we, we actually don't know the answer to that. What if you're a parent that smokes or vapes yourself? Because it's hard to give the message of don't smoke, don't vape while you have a cigarette in your hand. Oh, absolutely. And, and I, I think this is a very challenging, this is, it's very challenging for parents who are smokers or vapors. We have an incredible program, uh, if you go for adults and for parents, uh, both for parents who are currently smoking or vaping, but also for parents of young people who are vaping where they can get more information. So if you go to become at annex.org, you can participate in a uh, cessation program that connects you with other people in the community that are dealing, trying to quit, right? That have uh, teenagers who are vaping and help you connect with some, some resources and some strategies for how to talk to your uh, how to talk to your teenagers, but also how you can quit yourself. Having community around you can make such a difference. And then it's sort of like, well, I don't know quite what to say, but hearing other people's ideas and experiences, that makes a huge difference. I, I, I 100% agree. And, you know, when you have the opportunity to connect in an authentic way with somebody and say, hey, I'm dealing with this, and just knowing that somebody else is dealing with it, uh, a similar a similar situation in their household and and how they're handling it it is it is one of the big successes uh, or key reasons of why this program is successful are there any products that parents should be on the lookout for like i've heard there's some kind of synthetic nicotine or uh, what else is out there right now well, uh, when it comes to vaping, the, there are so many products that are coming, you know, that we're finding about every day. And, uh, and uh, so it's very hard for us to say, hey, keep an eye uh, out for, for puff bar or keep an uh -huh. eye out for, uh, for oral uh, nicotine pouches, right? Because it's changing. And listen, our, our teenagers probably, they're past the thing that we're going to find out about tomorrow. They're already not using it anymore, right? And, and so uh, the, what we recommend is that parents, you know, just just stay in touch with your kids. Are they seeming jittery, right? Are they becoming reclusive, right? Are they running out of the house or into their bedroom every 10 minutes or so so that they can take a hit of their vape? And, uh, you know, the idea of synthetic nicotine, Yes, that that is a big problem. Uh, but um, and and what the manufacturers were trying to do is they were trying to find a loophole in how to provide these products to young people. But luckily, Congress fixed that issue for us uh, a couple of months ago. But I guess my point about the products is that they come in every shape, every form every flavor and it's really the flavors that are problematic for for young people because they think it's it's grape and cherry and cotton candy and and uh these flavors are enticing to young people and they think well it tastes like bubble gum why it this couldn't be bad for me and so I, that's another thing that parents should look out for if they smell a minty smell uh or um, a candy smell that they should they should be paying attention because it may not just be a starburst. Mm. Trying to fight the next thing is like fighting a tidal wave. Yeah. These companies really are just shady, you know. <laughs> um, do you, thank you so much for coming on the show. I was real excited to have you on. Do you have any closing messages or ideas you'd like to share with the audience? No, I just I I really wanna I, I really wanna thank you for having us here today. Uh, there's there's a few things again for parents who are dealing with young people who are vaping or are vaping or smoking themselves. They should go to becomeanx.org. Uh, we also have a curriculum that is free for every high school. So for those parents who are involved uh, in your high school programs, we have a curriculum called Vaping Know the Truth. 
Uh, and, and so there are resources out there to help parents and young people who are facing, uh, facing these issues. And, and we just want to be there to help. Thank you, Amy Taylor, and thank you to the Truth Campaign. Imagine how many lives they have impacted over the years. You're doing great work. This has been the Parental Compass by Family Education and Support Services. I'm Bobby Williams. We'll see you next week. Peace.